If you're not listening to podcast, the terrorists are winning. That's what Jay Moore says. Welcome to the Popecast. Sit down and enjoy a pint. Welcome to the much-anticipated heat episode of the Pubcast. Allison and Rob join me to break down this great 1995 classic from director Michael Mann, a Chicago guy. This is the first time De Niro and Pacino appeared in the same scene together. Uh, both were in Godfather 2, but never in the same scene. Heat might be the pinnacle of Michael Mann's gritty 80s aesthetic, and it's a story he loved so much he made it twice. Before Heat, he had basically the same script and characters in a TV pilot called L.A. Takedown. This is the movie that, 18 years ago, Rob proclaimed was in his top five of all time, and we laughed him out of the room. Uh, You have to listen to the first 15 minutes to see if he makes his case or changes his tune. So strap on your body armor, grab your AR-15, and join us for a downtown shootout as we break down Heat. on the street, have no attachments, allow nothing to be in your life that you cannot walk out on in 30 seconds flat if you spot the heat around the corner. In the city of Los Angeles. Recognize the MO? MO is that they're good. If you think these guys are scoring once and passing through, I doubt it. A relentless police detective is on the trail what do we got? of a master thief. Your fugitive number one with a bullet is double the risk here. You're wrong. It's four times the risk, and I'm double the worst trouble you ever had. Clear! And his reckless partner. The bank is worth the risk. We should take it down. I want full surveillance. 24 hours, round the clock. We never close open seven days a week. Assume they got our phones, assume they got our houses, assume they got us. Bam, bye-bye. They get more daring with every score. What's the estimate? 12.2 million. You're up. But one cop... He's here. I can feel it. ...is closing in. Whatever score they're gonna take next, they're gonna have the surprise of a lifetime. Now, for the first time, Academy Award winner Al Pacino and Academy Award winner Robert De Niro collide. If I'm there and I gotta put you away, I'll tell you, you are going down. What if you do got me boxed in and I gotta put you down? Because no matter what, you will not get in my way. I will not hesitate for a second. Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Val Kilmer in a Michael Mann film heat okay heat 1995 the no-nonsense plot uh a group of high-end professional thieves start to feel the heat (laughs) from the lapd is is there a quote or no no No. all right i just air quoted it in my mind uh to feel heat when the LAPD uh, know they unwillingly leave a clue at their last heist. I feel like someone slick. That wasn't their last. Ah, uh, yeah. Though. I mean, that whoever this writer was really a, took a step over the line. A I feel. I really feel like. inaccurate. Okay. Yes. Okay. That was well, one of the, that's one of the worst. Uh, it's, quick, it's the worst. Uh, Quirk intros ever. It's officially the worst uh, no nonsense first, plot ever. First half, fine. Second half, what? Yeah, all of a sudden it turns into an editorial. It, <laughs> it completely <laughs> fell down after the word heat. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, this was 95. Okay. I definitely saw it in the theater. I have no recollection of seeing this movie in the theater. It would have been with us. You or you or do you, I'm sorry, Polly do you have the release date exact? It was December. Oh. Of ninety five. Yeah. Could it have been during Christmas time? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> or December fifteenth, <laughs> roughly. Yeah, then then that means yes. Right. Well, that, yeah. Uh, no, I mean we could have been <clears throat> home. You I don't I don't believe I don't believe I don't remember seeing this in the theater. I, I, I very likely did. Um 
Because I wouldn't have waited. Ninety five. I like long. that none of us remember. Oh, no, this is really entertaining. It's an entertaining <laughs> podcast. I don't. Old people who can't remember. I don't remember when the first time I saw. We've it talked was. about these movies in eighty two, and I remember distinctly I seeing know, the theater. This ninety five. I, I have no well, idea. Well, the fact that. It's been coined one of the greatest movies. Yeah, we'll get to oh, it. And, we'll get to that. And, in a second. But none of us from it. It made <laughs> no impression on the first time we saw well, it. Is interesting. We should start uh, creating a scale of shock, uh, Shawshank like uh, mm. intensity because okay. if it's on heat, I'm watching it. I'm watching it. Right. Yes. I'm stopping for yes. a second yes. at least. That's a rewatchable scale. That's a, a rewatchable. Deal with that. Okay. Yeah. But. Uh, it's up there with Shawshank for me. I mean, Shawshank, at, to be honest, I kind of just skipped now. But uh, what? Uh, eh. So, well, because he's seen it sixty-seven thousand times, but it's on every day, always. Right. It's on a loop. Um, sitting down and watch th- watching this, I th- I said this today. I think it's the first time since seeing it in the theater, which I <laughs> I'm assuming I did at this point. I'm just guessing uh, that I've watched it start to finish uninter- uninterrupted. Oh yeah, I couldn't even do it. I, it's long. It's, a it's long, long movie. but like in the past, I, I'd watch like I don't know, fifteen minutes on TV or a half hour or the f- last forty-five minutes. But I've never watched it start to finish yeah. since ninety-five. I mean, the first time I, in a long time that it, like in decades that I had watched it, like I had to be on like a flight yeah. to San Francisco to like have like but the so full it, length like full run time to be able to watch it uninterrupted. In doing that, I really finally figured out the characters and I wasn't confused at all. <laughs> 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 like, oh, Van Zant and the guy who is uh uh Charlene's like side piece. Uh, those are uh, different you, people. Do you need a spoiler alert here? No. Okay. okay. Right. It's a uh, a thirty year old movie, I think. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um yeah, so there's that. Uh, I do. I want to dive into the heart of this podcast already. <laughs> you can't resist. No, I can't resist. You cannot resist. This is, this is the whole reason why we're doing this. <laughs> uh, Fifteen years ago? No, longer than that. Twenty years. We ago. we have a almost twenty year old. Did we, did we have, did we have kids before? No, this okay. we did not have children. We're at your Allison's birthday party on the top of Rock Bottom Brewery in Chicago. I think that oh, yeah. Was that, I didn't recall that yeah. being the location. I recall being elevated, though. I yeah. Not we're on the that. roof. Yeah. Right. And it's getting late, and we're drinking. And side note, I have a 5K the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to be running at 8 a.m. the next morning. getting rid of all that water weight That's by poor drinking scheduling. the night before. Yeah. That's poor scheduling. And I remember, like, oh, saying you. that I'll, I'll be fine. Yeah. And then... Definitely Not. didn't go to the fight. <laughs> um, oh, you didn't even go? Yeah. <laughs> no. no. Uh, and we had this conversation of top five movies. Yes. <laughs> yes. Our favorite movies of all time. And this is the conversation I always have. Not the best ones. Your favorite right. five. Right. Are, those are two different right. things. I mean, it's... Right. So... And my five is essentially the same five for the past 25 Your years. Your top five is, 20 is the same six every time. And I go, order doesn't matter, but the Godfather 1 and 2, Goodfellas, Big Lebowski, and my fifth spot is a constant rotation of Snatch and Casino Royale. Right. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a weak I love number Snatch. five. I, I love it more than most. Yeah. Everyone. Um, oh, I know so, the feeling. I always go to that. And so we're doing this round robin thing. What's your five? What's your five? And we come to Rob. And Rob says I'm, his I'm top gonna, I don't, five. I don't feel you have this level of detail re- recall on this. I, I don't know your top five. I remember your top five better than mine. Uh, <laughs> okay. Time. So you might know it. Rob's top five goes, he throws out a Godfather. He throws out a Goodfellas. He throws down a Jaws. And then the natural. Was oh, the there. natural. The natural was on your. Might have been. That was very. Yeah, sure. That and one then, is very like peculiar. That's just me. I think. Right. I'm not like a, yours I'm not and a, snatch. I'm really. not opposed to that. Yeah. I don't right. think one in a right. thousand people would say snatch is in the right. top no, five sure. of all time. And yeah. I, I yeah. fully accept that. Yeah. I'm, I'm good with that. Natural, fine. I, I don't think anyone balked at the natural. <laughs> and then number five, <laughs> Rob throws down heat. 
<laughs> I almost turned inside out. I laughed so hard. I don't know why. It struck... I don't know why it struck me so. I f- immediately. It, yeah. It. it the story hit really me. isn't my stupidity. It's <laughs> Allison's reaction to whatever I said because it was. Uh, you know, Instantly, the right oh side God. of my head exploded. It's, I, I couldn't... I'm like, hate top five? Oh, my God. Well, first of all, I you really... You can argue it's not a top five heist movie. I That I would challenge you on, but... But it's, I, a, it's a discussion. I, I believe that my prediction moves closer and closer to accuracy every day. Wow. It's just not there yet. That's unfortunately the story. Have you broken 100 yet? Because it's, it's moving up? I I mean, especially in reading the glowing press t- uh, for Heat 2. Heat's awesome. Uh, the, and, and, the, and the commentary on some of the uh, research went for yeah. the 25th anniversary. Sure. Uh, it's a great movie. It it's is definitely a, a great movie. movie. It's not it's a, a fine it's a, movie. It, it, listen, it is a great movie in, in, the, in the sense that there's a lot of uh, thought went into it. It's obviously some amazing <laughs> performances. I think I love Michael Mann, and this story and these characters were clearly an obsession for him because right. he kept revisiting them yeah. Yeah. throughout his career and continues, obviously, with the book and everything else. Yeah. So he loves these people. Yeah. So I love... There was a depth to it that was awesome, and I don't know, maybe I was lonely at the time <laughs> or something. I don't know. But, it, <laughs> it was one of the... I am convinced it was the hardest I've laughed in my entire life. Well, I do. And I don't know why. I <laughs> really, I, honestly, I don't know why it caught no, me. No, it's a movie that people talk about, we all know about. and the, But no one would think it. Everyone who, nobody who likes it. Even, everybody who loves it ranks it number 16 <laughs> or whatever it is. Like, no one, it, at no point is it. Like, it's like a oh it's shocker. I would be that guy at the American Film Institute. I'm like, uh, I'd like to make some nominations. <laughs> we seem a, to be steamrolling through editions. things here. I've got a couple of editions. I mean, if I hear Gone with the Wind one more fucking time. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, Ooh, Citizen Kane. <laughs> yeah. like, fine. That one's fine. I have a suggestion, though. Uh, well, we were watching this. Both of us, st- that aside... Uh, <laughs> both of us snickered at a lot of the oh, writing in this oh, movie. A hundred A lot of the, like, certain lines were delivered, and you're like, what? <laughs> what was that? Like, that's just, Michael Mann wrote that and, like, sat back and, like, I did it. I fucking did it. <laughs> that line? Well, give me an example. Line. Uh... When Pacino says, what are you, an owl? Who? Who? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of Pacino. When Tom Sizemore, when Tom Sizemore says, "For me, the action is the juice." <laughs> Michael Mann threw down his typewriter and like, "Fucking hell, man!" So I, 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 I I'm, 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 I'm having a terrible time reading you. Are you mocking that, or are you, you? I'm mocking it. Oh. I like, I love this movie. It's great. See, c- because those lines are ludicrous. Well, and I don't want to jump to like the apex of the movie, but there were times of it's very cartoony dialogue in the movie that I actually recalled being worse than they were. Which ones? Or well, so no, I'm thinking roughly. especially with Pacino and De Niro. Oh, yeah, yeah. They I, were be- far better than I remembered them is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I just... I thought those were well-written. Yeah, Others are... Yeah. I mean, and I and I think I'm also accepting the fact that I'm watching it now with 2022 eyes versus in 1995. Of course, that always affects it. But in watching it recently, like, some of the writing actually took me out of the movie. Like, so, like, you're watching it, watching it, watching it. Like, it's starting to build some tension. And then there's, like, a super corny line. Well, and I'm like... <laughs> well, I feel that it is a little... Like, I'm, the I'm Ashley Judd. I'm like, giggling. I'm sick of it. 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 I mean, um, there, there's, there's, there's four of those. That was more her choice, I kind of felt like. But still, yeah. Definitely, definitely. But... I do, I will say that he, the man is um, typically such a great vibe creator, right? <laughs> right. Like, his whole thing is like, let me, let me just present, right. a, like, I was watching Collateral, actually, almost as much as I watched TV I watched it for the days. first time uh, a couple months ago. And there's just that, he has an ominous yeah. lens on LA that is yeah. like, man, that place, and yeah. it, he like makes it almost like 
a backdrop to every scene. Right. And I thought he did that well in Heat, but then he would interrupt it a little bit right. by... So, like... It's a little hope. Like, there's some hope. But, lines like, the conversation yeah. between De Niro and Val Kilmer when Kilmer crashed at his place. Yeah. Right. That's good. It's great. Right. A couple conversations with Amy Brenneman, I think, are pretty good. Mm-hmm. And then there's some of the clunkers. Right. That are, you know, like... I agree. Like, even the Tone low club scene, oh my some God, clunker, so clunkers in there. Good. Not even on his part, but on, yeah. on their part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I guess, I guess <clears throat> there's... Probably. Why does he... Why does Michael Mann set these movies in L.A.? So like, he's got a thing, right? He like, obviously is either in love or hate but he's of, with the city. Clearly, a Chicago guy and likes Chicago. He also probably defined Miami more it, than anyone else, right? So uh, yeah, in LA? But, but it's oh, also, Miami. But I, I mean, think he, that's he the fantasy, right? right? But that's the fantasy part of of it is L.A. versus Chicago. Yes. Like, I don't want to jump ahead. I'm, I'm jumping we, ahead anyway. What, what are we doing? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, um, and for the trivia part. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, but this is all, these are all based on real. Right. But that's what I'm saying. It's based on a real. That's what I'm saying. Like, like Macaulay's a real in guy. in Chicago, that's in a Chicago. little bit more real, but L.A. is the, the heat, fantasy. The so. book is a lot of Chicago stuff. The, you mean the New York Times number one bestseller? <laughs> <laughs> I think the people have spoken. <laughs> and I will tell you. It'll go down in history. Oh, I, I did not finish the book. Have you purchased it? I've been reading it. I'm about oh. a quarter of the way through it. Oh, I, I was joking. I was yeah, like, yeah. should we all read it before yeah. this? No, I, I bought it before. Is it the, good? The first, the first chapter I read, I turned it out. I'm like, this is not written very well. Yeah. This, is, this is not a well-written book whatsoever. Like, dude, yeah. It's written like by a, a 12-year-old. It, it got better, but no, it, at the beginning, it's very stilted and very, like, tiny little sentences, and it's very, it's unusual. He's set in the five. It's fine. I think it, it'll be, it'll be good. Mm-hmm. And it, so far, it's good, but uh, it's Looks the same like problem it. I had with some of those lines in, in, the, in the movie, in the book, I had, like, oh, this is kind of mm-hmm. weird. Mm-hmm. Anyway, this movie has a cast of thousands. Yes. Really? Everywhere you turn is a guy you recognize right. or have heard of or well, that guy looks familiar or out of nowhere, Henry Rollins shows up. <laughs> so let me just run down the names of... Is he doing his crazy poetry? <laughs> so these are the names of guys that if you see them, see them, you know them if you don't know the name already. Right. Uh, on a podcast, not so great with the visuals, but I'll throw the names out. and I would think all these people are known to some degree. Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Val Kilmer, Tom Sizemore, John Voight, Amy Brenneman, Ashley Judd, Michael T. Williamson, Bubba, Ted Levine, Jamie Gum, Hell yeah. uh, Dennis Haysbert, the Allstate guy, uh, <laughs> Joe Boo, Wes Studdy, Studdy? Um, I don't know him by his name, but he is the... A uh, sixty-year-old uh, Native American actor that's been in everything over right. the past thirty years. Right. Oh yeah, Westworld. Yeah, is he in Westworld? I oh, think so. okay. Uh, Natalie Portman, William Fickner, uh, Hank Azaria, Danny Trejo as Trejo. Yes, like he plays himself. <laughs> of course. Awesome. Uh, he, should he be anybody else? Henry Rollins. I think yes. that's kind of his thing, right? I play me. And a nice little <laughs> out of left field Henry Piven for the win. Who? Jeremy Piven? Did I, did I say Henry Piven? You did. Jeremy Piven. Jeremy Piven. You forgot Tone Loke, man. I didn't. Even, I didn't even write Tone Loke on here. <laughs> they probably listed him by his real name, and I didn't see it. Yeah. Tone Loke. So that is a. There's a who's who there. That is insane. That's a huge number of actors in one movie. And, I mean, I can't, I'm trying to think back. Man also not known for, like, huge casts like that. No. Like, Collateral is 75% of the movies, two guys talking with one of them, you know? And then even the uh, Lecter stuff was always just the one-on-one interplay between and even uh, Public Enemies is largely like three people. Mm-hmm. Um, those type of things. He likes conversations, not like... Yeah. yeah. That's it. So I want to get... Okay, we talked about uh, that it is... Oh, I did... This is actually in this section. It wasn't in the trivia section. Yeah. So that's based on actual real events in the 1960s. 
between Neil McCauley and Detective Chuck Adamson, um, right down to the final uh, shootout uh, in Chicago. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, born in Chicago, grew up roughly at Kedzie and North Avenue. Who? Michael. Michael Mann. Mann. Okay. Um, moved I was to, helping our listeners. No, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Uh, moved to Humboldt Park and went to Amundsen? Amundsen? Edmondson, right? Edmonds? Edmondson. Yeah, high school uh, in the city and then went to UW-Madison. So nice. Midwestern guy. Um, okay, here's the first question for the... Distinguished group. panel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How distinguished, I don't know. Yeah. Can Michael Mann... Is he capable of writing female characters? No. I, apparently no. not. 100% no. At, at, at all? No. At all? No. So I wrote down a, a string no. of movies where I'm like, mm, he can't really do this. No. Uh, he's got a bunch of other movies, but Manhunter? No. no. Is there a woman in that movie? I don't know. <laughs> a lot of these movies, you'll see, like, there's, yeah. only, there's virtually no women. Yeah. No. Manhunter, Heat, The Insider, Ali... Collateral, Miami Vice. I didn't see, but we know what Miami there's, Vice there's is. There's a Jada well, Pinkett there's, in there's Collateral, a, too. There are yeah, women kinda, in there, yeah, but it doesn't mean there are good parts. And then Public Enemies. Yeah. Was he also Transformers? Michael Mann? Yeah. No. I want to see a Michael Mann Transformers <laughs> Yes, movie, yeah. that'd be the coolest Transformers movie. Of? Who am I thinking of? <laughs> Michael Bay. Bay. or something. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm thinking of, yeah. Uh, so... Poorly or non-existent uh, character development for the female characters, but also like zero connection between the the two male leads and their girlfriend whatsoever. Well, I don't. No, I take issue with that. I really? actually think um, I, didn't, I was. I was going to say of the movies, I think Amy Brenneman, and I think it has more to do with performance actually, but maybe she and Ashley Judd, I thought did really well with those characters. Like I felt they were real, and like the scene between. Yeah. Uh, Chris and Charlene, obviously, you know, with the the, the yeah. hand signal, yeah. is kind of iconic for the movie. Yeah. Iconic. That's a great, yeah, iconic for an is iconic it? film. Right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, Top five. And then even the tension, I think, with uh, uh, Edie. So anyway, I. The, but why he were doesn't they, have a good track the, record. Why so. were they connected? They're kind of. They're kind of um, they just met each other Edie at the Neil. diner. That's it. I, I know. What, what was so special about their bond? Yeah. yeah you, you, it was a vibe. <laughs> was it? Yeah, you just felt it and understood it. Really? Magically. Yeah? Yeah. Mm. So you don't, you, you don't think that it, it, he has this... It's because she called him out. Are you lonely? That's right. She Aren't did. She challenged him. I think that was part of it. It's a book about medals. <laughs> 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 but, I mean, it is hard to have what a character... Why are you, like, wonder, why are you asking? Yeah. <laughs> why are you so interested in what I do? It's a good vibe, though. It's a nonsense. Uh, <laughs> I like the I like his character. She is a, a zero. I feel like the women are an afterthought. Well, I think like they oh, do the best sure. that they can. Yes. they do the best they can with the parts sure. that 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 are written for them. But they are two good actresses in these parts. But they are superfluous <sighs> to the story. Yeah, they add almost nothing. There isn't any female character in the movie. That adds something to the movie. Well, if you were to cut them out, it doesn't. No, change that's it. not true. If this I movie would have been three hours and ten minutes, then we would have. I mean, all that. it would take away from the. You know, the uh, the. You can't. What, what is that? I'd have I, to write it. Look at it, but you know the. The action is the juice. Oh god. <laughs> I don't think. He, don't get she, attached to anything. You can't walk that's away. That's right. So there's a challenge there because yeah, yeah. that's the yeah. ethos of the film, right? And then they're in these yeah. relationships, but. Yeah. Um, I do think it. I don't think it was a genuine character. It was kind of two dimensional, but it gave him the motivation to try and go legit, so to speak. Yeah. But not because necessarily I felt like, oh yeah, he really loves her. He was like, right. she's just a right. part of that package. It, it's right. a catalyst right. to like he's look maybe looking to get out of it. But I, it's weird because there was no evidence he was looking to get out until he met her. And then there was zero connection. Well, it didn't seem as motivating connection. enough, I guess. Right, right. But 
the other he guys did a good had job trying. I will say that De Niro yeah. did a good job trying. I would like to applaud him for his <laughs> effort. He gets yeah. a small trophy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, body count in this movie. Oh. Ooh. Well, after watching, it's higher than I remember. It's like brutally high. I, I can only go by what I found. Okay. I'm, I didn't count all this, okay. so I'm going by what I. Found. I mean, it would have been one guess? of the. Do we get to no, guess? but but just for yeah. context, before yeah. you even say numbers, I mean, just in the, it's actually the last scene I w- watched in depth. Uh, yep. It would have been one of America's greatest <laughs> crime stories of all time. Well, it was. We we saw it in L. A. A year later. Well, right? but I mean, yes, yes, there I mean, was the famous incident. Well, it wasn't that intense. I mean, this was know, over but, blocks right, right, and right. multiple vehicles <laughs> and hundreds of shots fired. I mean, right. unprecedented. It was a ten-minute scene, right? I mean, it's nuts. I saw somewhere that, and take this with a grain of salt, but uh, that for each scene, like each take, they would expel up to a thousand rounds yeah. per take. <laughs> yeah, I saw that too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, blanks or whatever, but right. still. Okay, body That's count. A lot of shells. So I've got the body count for the entire film. Okay. And then I have it broken down by four of the main characters. Yes. Oh, you've assigned the kill. Oh. That's what I found. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. wow. Impressive. Yeah. Uh, so what's your number for the entire film? Well, more than 250 people had to have died in this movie, right? I'm going to say 87. Maybe 250 is too high. Okay. Rob, can I go? Can I go down to one seventy five? One seventy five. That's too high. Damn it! What are you? What are you talking about? There's a lot of death. <laughs> Al says what? I said eighty seven. Eighty seven. I do like when Vince Vincent's trying to get down. Get down. <laughs> yeah, I, know. That, I would be grocery, okay in the grocery store parking lot. Get down, and he's just throwing women around. <laughs> I feel like as he says, get down, he picks a woman up. Right. Like, get down, shield. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. What I found, again, yes. I don't know how valid this is. I assume it's on-screen kills. Yes. Off-screen. Right. I don't yeah. know how you evaluate There's no real that. accountability there. Entire film, 18. What? No. That's not true. <laughs> that can't that not be true. That cannot be true. I found it low, too, but... I mean, you I got get, what three? I, 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 I said I, I don't know how many people You got Trejo. Shot. You got probably twenty. Oh no! I, I mean, I can almost name eighteen. In the, in the. But how much of it is movie magic trickery? Well, there's like just cuts. There's all three that, or four. Saying, what, how many were killed shootout. in the opening scene? So they've got. I mean, right there's the, there the are in the uh, there are a lot of. Uh, uh, Secondary characters that have a couple of kills, one or whatever, here and there. But let me give you the, the, the main characters. Hannah Pacino kills two. Macaulay kills nine. Uh, Shirley uh, Val Kilmer kills one. Tom Sizemore, Chirito, Chirito, uh kills four. They've got a, a total of 18. I know, I, I know. They're missing know. the... The well, Ringro one. killed the prostitute, first of all. I was just going to say, yeah. He's on the list. In, in I shouldn't say that. Young, sucks, traffic lady that was forced <laughs> into a terrible situation. Not prostitute. <laughs> that feels Sex low. Trafficking. That's way that low. That feels yeah. low. It's gotta, I mean, Let's it, watch the it, last it's scene here. I feel like right? it's yeah. just it's watching 30, the shootout 35. feels like there's a lot more cops that got taken so, out. Whatever. There was a parking lot of the grocery store. I wasn't going to investigate we this. So when Ted know. Levine got shot, he yeah. was, did you hear him? He went, ooh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought I heard it like 17 <laughs> times. <laughs> I got shot. <laughs> and then he went around the corner, like in a weird way. <laughs> around the car, it fell <laughs> in the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. one of the things I wrote <clears throat> down as a memorable scene, and I giggled when I saw <laughs> it, was... <clears throat> At the beginning of the street shootout scene, yeah. a police officer, one of the main guys, I can't remember where I've seen him before, but you'd recognize the actor, gets shot, dies, and he looks, he's posed just like Jamie Gum after he got, <laughs> <laughs> he got shot by uh, Clarice. Yeah, like, yeah. 
dude, we will pull it up after this pod, and you will see what I'm talking You think I'm that was an homage? About. Yes, one hundred percent. That's awesome. Ted was probably just happy to be working again <laughs> in a normal job. Did he go into a basement that was seventy two hundred square feet? <laughs> there were a lot of moths. <laughs> All right. Uh, box office performance for this. Uh, this, so I've got the real figures, not just the in-year figures, because it came out in December and you only have two weeks worth of whatever. Uh, we've done ninety-five before. Okay. Uh, so let's just go through it. Uh, <laughs> Toy Story number one, one hundred ninety-one million. Mm. Batman Forever, Ooh. one hundred eighty-four. Apollo thirteen, in third. Pocahontas, number I four. I a dead comment from Batman Forever, and I will always regret it. Well, you got to say it now. <laughs> Ed, this is That's for you. That's the one with Alicia Silverstone in it, right? It, sure, I think so. Yeah. Um, she huh. tur- like it's a it's a yeah turn of her bottom in. They're gearing up and they're yeah, fucking bat costumes. And his comment in the movie theater was bat boner, and I. <laughs> <laughs> bat boner uh, holy bat boner Batman Ed Cosgrove ladies and gentlemen <laughs> me jefe but every time I hear that movie I think of that <laughs> ludicrous uh, number five Ace Ventura When Nature Calls oh jeez oh, uh, number six Gold Knight number seven Jumanji number oh. eight Casper number nine seven Ooh. with a hundred million Number 10, Die Hard with a Vengeance, with 100 million. Heat was number 25, mm-hmm. with 67 million. That's still It's probably pretty... an expensive movie to make, yeah. though, I would think. The budget was 60. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Not a blockbuster. Well, one of the things that I. Well, uh, <coughs> it, it did well, but for 60 million in production, that's yeah. crazy. It, it, I mean, throw in the marketing stuff, it. Lost money, I'm sure. The, all of those people? The, they well, that's right. <laughs> they, that's a cast that, that probably... Oh. They had a who's who of, of like character actors. Yeah. Uh, I did read that, um, and you note it, like, I, I didn't notice it, I guess, perfectly until someone pointed it out, but no sound stages and no sets in the entire movie. They I filmed, saw that, too. That's they filmed crazy. only in real locations. So if they were in a restaurant, they actually filmed in that restaurant. Mm. And then obviously on the street and, and out and about L.A. for a lot of it. So that, I don't know if that's more expensive. I'm I assuming know, it is. I don't know either. No, because if you're on a sound it's stage, you obviously you can control it. everything. No, yeah, but, but you got to build it all. It's not, it's it's not nearly. you got to pay to shut down the street and do all that mm. stuff. I mean, they basically took over downtown L.A. And probably for two weeks, right, to film all that. I'll say this. As someone way on the outside, you can kind of you, you can feel that in this movie. You That's can what I'm see saying. That in this is movie. one of the best yeah. characters is his whole vibe, like this whole yeah. L.A. underbelly type thing. Yeah, but it <coughs> couldn't have been cheap. But yeah, that no. was. I feel like it's it is strange that Ma- Michael Mann kind of like had a little bit of success. Like he's never had like a massive blockbuster, no. right? But. He clearly, when he was given a little runway, except for when he did Transformers, well, <laughs> when he was Walter. given a, when he was given a chance, this is the story that he chose. Yeah. Like right. I'm going all yeah. in. I want it's, these actors and yeah. this much budget, and I'm going to do everything live action outside. You know. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah, it's pretty. I don't think it. it that's my other comment we can get to later. But I, they don't make a lot of movies like oh. this movie at all, ever S- since. No special effects. No stages. Yeah, think about that. No special effects. Yeah, and all the firing, real craziness. Even the fucking sounds of the guns. Real. Yeah, they had yeah, all like, movie. S- like microphones everywhere to yeah. pick up the real sound. This movie sounds, at least that section for sure, doesn't sound like any other movie. Right. Yeah. Right. It's kind of cool. Uh, Rotten Tomato score. Audience... Or critics, which one do you oh, want to go first? I think the audience will have to be higher, right? Mm, I don't know. Uh-huh. If you I got smart know. critics like me. Right. Let's do the, Rob critics the critics critic? first, then. Is Rob a critic? <laughs> 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 okay, critics. If if top five right. equals a critic. All right, I'm going to go with 88. <coughs> critics, critics we're doing? Yeah. 88. Oh, I'm going... Uh, 
Someone nailed it on the head. Oh. Ooh. Oh, indubitably. I think that's never happened in the Rotten Tomatoes Ooh. game as it is. Do tell. Uh, critics gave it 88. Whoa! Wow. Impressive. Let's give snaps. <laughs> That is, is that how a, we're doing this? That's an impressive number. We've, I'm never giving a snap. No. <laughs> All right. What was the audience score mm. for Heat? This is thumbs up, thumbs down audience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say 88. Mm. I was going to say I would be f- more comfortable going higher for the audience. Mm-hmm. But... Eight seems high again. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> For your top five? I know. <laughs> I know, I know. 87? Wow. Oh. So you have the critics, or the audience, going one step well, down. Well, I've, I've been I'm shaped critics. by my original burn here, so. Right. Uh, audience score of 94. Oh. oh. See? A lot, a lot of people were jazzed. A lot of Rob Nash from that audience. A lot of white Midwesterners were really stoked Rob's about this movie. movie. He played to his base. That's all right. All right, trivia time. Yes. But as we know, this is the first time. Don't be rubbing that paper against that mic. Uh, this is the first time De Niro and Pacino were in the same scene together. Yes. yes. That's all. That's that it. was the, that. and apparently no. that no. was what that scene sold both of them and Michael Mann for like that. Uh, choosing the movie and choosing to work on it was because of that, and they were all very excited to film that scene. Rewatching that scene, it's fine. It was better than I. It was good. Remember, it, it was. Yeah, it I would agree. Does not agree. live up to the hype. I don't think, though. Yeah, I don't think it could. I don't know how it could. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. But I think both, like you could tell, both of them were like in that scene, like they so, were ready. But to yeah, do again, it. going back to the, <laughs> the criticism a little bit, now that I think about it. It was a little on the nose because you could sure. almost yeah they they obviously could have been talking about acting like the conversation could be not about being a cop and being a robber totally it could have been about acting right if you look at it that way uh, so I think it's a tough it's a tough challenge for the writer and the director and then both of those guys it's to like tough to lift up to or live up to anything. it's also funny that okay you have this iconic at the moment scene. These two amazing actors have never appeared in the same scene together, and I'm gonna have them at a sitting at a diner where I have to do cross coverage, so they're never in the same frame together. So you never. Oh, know but if that's a really Michael Man. Thing. I know, I know, I mean, but it's that's... it's funny though. It's like you have this thing that you could do this cool, never been done before scene with these two great actors, and he, they could have been in different rooms, and it would have been. You blew it. It, it would have worked. It, it might have worked. Let's say that. Uh, not a big deal. Good scene. Uh, it, it wasn't... It wasn't mind-blowing, it could, you know? Well, it never... I'm not sure could, what, it, what, it, what, it, yeah, what it could have been, it, but... Again, yeah. like, as, as it was said before, like, it could never live up to the hype or the expectation of having those two people together. Right. Uh, I, I think individually, they lived up to the... Role. Role, or, or, or proved oh. that they were maniacal about their their... Work. We didn't talk about it earlier. We'll have to at some point. We got to come back to uh, Pacino in this movie. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. He's out of his fucking mind. He's out of his gourd. He was turned up to eleven. His character is clearly on cocaine. They cut out scenes that he would have been sh- been shown doing cocaine in the movie, but they cut that stuff out. Uh, he oh. is nuts in this movie. Yeah. Uh, but We'll get to that, to that toward the end when we talk about our thoughts. Uh, our guy, Wayne Grow. Yes. Yes. Uh, Allison, do you know who that actor is? I don't. Because well, I, I knew it when I saw him. I can't him. think of the his name, but I know what he's been in. He was one of the guys, one of the uh, Navy SEAL trainers in G.I. Jane. Yelling at Mr. Wickwire. He was under Vigo Mortensen on the That's beach. That's where you go. Oh. Popular movie. He was one of those guys. Got it. 
that's a very rewatchable. It's always on TV yeah. on a Sunday afternoon or something. Uh, G.I. Jane, that guy is that guy. Anyway, that guy went to jail for two years in 2003 right. uh, for marijuana possession and growing. Uh, and all the prison guards called him Wing Grow. <laughs> Which is awesome. Well, you got to feel good about that, walking in prison, right? Wing Grow. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. Uh, Al Pacino improvised the, she's got a great ass. No. Yes. Fine. Yes. No. And Hank Azaria <coughs> was like, holy crap. Like, well, he the got fact startled. He confirmed like, it. He said, he, he, it scared the hell out of me. Uh, and he just terrified me. Yeah. Uh, and it was not, a- I was not acting at all. I was just reacting to Pacino because I was <laughs> scared shitless. And he does have a weird pause after it. And he comes back with a good line. I can't remember exactly what it is. But he, he's he, got a great ass, and your yeah, head is all the way up it. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> then Hank comes back and says something like, hey, come on. Like, resets the, yeah. the conversation yeah, a little yeah. bit, and then they go back into it. But we note, we talked about this, I think, before we were going about how. After the great ass, where he makes, you know, it's a loud, shocking statement, right? And then there's, like, this pause, and then he goes back in for, like, this apology line for, like, right. when I start thinking about asses. Right. Right. Like, what? Right. Are... It's, it's insane. It's, it's, it's Pacino just being insane. Yeah. yeah. He's out of his mind this whole movie. Uh, in an early draft of the script, uh, Vincent Hanna Pacino had a cocaine habit. Um, which we talked about. Which explains his bombastic out- outbursts. Oh, really? Hmm. Donald yeah, Trump know. Jr. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Wayne Grow. Back to, okay. This is all Wayne Grow trivia, wow. apparently. <laughs> it's Wayne Grow all the time. Uh, based on a real Chicago criminal named Wayne Grow, uh, who ratted out some influential Chicago criminals. Uh, according to Michael Mann, he went missing, and his body would, was found in northern Mexico. Where it was nailed to the wall of a shed. Oh boy! Oh yeah, I saw, I saw that. It's not yeah. so great. The shootout uh, in June of 2002. The scene involving the shootout after the bank robbery robbery was shown to the U.S. Marine recruits uh, in San Diego as an example of the proper way to retreat while under fire. And I also then, saw. Oh. Sorry, you can say it if you want. No, go ahead. Uh, Val Kilmer, yeah, yeah uh, was thrilled to learn uh, that the gun battle scene where he runs out of bullets and rapidly changes his magazine is shown to Marine recruits as an example of how to perform the action properly. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's good. I know it seems weird. I feel like we should have a better standard <laughs> than Val. Kilmer. So one little. I'm actually horrified for my family's just, safety right now. <laughs> One little bit of tri- if we're oh. on trivia, yeah, yes. it's, it's indeed is, little. Um, Dennis Farina was a consultant yeah. for the film. Oh, yeah. geez, <laughs> come on, of course he yeah. was. Is this <clears throat> moron number one? Yep, Chicago plus cops equals Dennis Farina. I don't think so. <clears throat> and I wrote this down for Rob in mm. small and very small handwriting, yes, on a, on a post it because the 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 statement <laughs> is so ridiculous i'm sick of but it. i thought of you when i read is it is it a dennis farina statement no oh. that heat is in, <laughs> is included among the american film institute's 2001 list of 400 movies nominated nominated for the top 100 most heart pounding wow. american movies Amen. There are so many qualifiers to this movie. You know what? That adds up to top five all time. Yeah, Specific yeah. to 2001. <laughs> list of 400 movies nominated for the top 100. Nominated for the Of 100. the most heart-pounding, so a specific right. category, yes. American movies. Yes. So it's got to jump through a lot of hoops. To it's get one to of the right best there. movies it's of 1995 <laughs> about a bank heist... <laughs> In L.A., starring Pacino and De Niro. And <laughs> How dare you. I loved it. I loved it, and I thought of you. And I, had to, I wrote out the whole sentence All for right. you. Took half your post-it. It did. Before Danny Trejo was hired to play the role of Trejo, Trejo. in the movie, he and Edward Bunker, which I want to get back to him in a second, because he's my favorite, <laughs> one of my favorite movie guys ever, uh... 
were hired to be armed robbery consultants since they both did time for these crimes and knew the ins and outs of performing crimes. So Danny Trejo was hired as a robbery consultant and then what played Trejo in the movie. Right. Edward Bunker. Yes. Eddie Bunker. Who is that? Oh, I can't find my note on him. Where was it? Damn it. I put it somewhere. Uh, I, I can figure it out. Okay. He was... Where? Oh, Eddie Bunker. Um, the character of John Voight. Yes. Nate. With the long ponytail yep. and the bad mustache. My favorite character. Long hair splotchy in skin. Obviously can't handle John Voight, but he's awesome in this movie. Is based on a real life, like criminal right. guy. That guy is Eddie Bunker, who was on the movie. So this character is based on Eddie Bunker. Do you know who Eddie Bunker is? No. Remember Reservoir Dogs? Yes. He was one of the Reservoir Dogs, the older guy with the thinny oh. hair and the mustache. Yeah? That's Eddie Bunker. Oh. Mr. Blue. Oh. Oh, my God. Career criminal... John Voight plays him in the movie, and Eddie Bunker was a consultant on that movie as well. Oh, my God. Murdered multiple people, <laughs> oh, involved geez. in multiple bank heists. Like, I- I've seen, like, a-, a YouTube documentary on him, and he's a nut job. And wow. Like, he- he'll-, he'll tell a story freely, and he's like, just that's just the way it was. We kill people, and we rob banks, and that's... Oh, my God. Like, Who is this fucking guy? Wow. So he he was Mr. in Blue. he was in Reservoir Dogs that he consult I'm assuming as well mm, and then maybe. consulted and was in this as well yeah did oh my he God. Play, John Boyd play, plays but, him it's so but did he silly. play a cop when? in this movie no Eddie Bunker I don't believe he's in the movie at all oh he was just a uh, consultant maybe he was some uncredited thing okay because uh, I feel like he might have been the cop that got killed that I thought was oh could have been. Done. We'll, we'll look back and see uh, it. We, Could we will, because That's good. I'm like, I've seen him before. I can't place it. All right. Al Pacino and Robert De Niro <laughs> were <laughs> Michael Mann's first choices for <laughs> Hannah and Macaulay. <clears throat> Ted Levine yeah. was originally <laughs> offered the part to play Wayne Grove. Of course he was. Yeah. He could have been a better wing girl. He can't be two time no. serial killer though. He's no. like, I've already done yeah. my I've yeah. already done my part. Yep. He turned he, he, it he turned it down because he didn't want to be typecast. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, he can't hear uh, goodbye horses anymore. Like Oink McCauley. <laughs> yeah. Uh Don Johnson was briefly considered for the part of Michael Chirito. He was also discussed as a possible backup for both De Niro and Pacino. Wow. If one of them turned down the parts. Wow. Was he that big? Don Johnson in 95? 95. Mm. Michael Mann loved him. Yeah. Yeah. Because of that Miami Vice. Right. That's... You said the Farina part already? Yeah. That's all I got. All right. All right. It's a recasting debate. We call it recast debate. Better close the door. It's time to recast your bait. Chung, chung, chung. <laughs> okay, we've got the thieves, we've got the cops, and we've got some miscellaneous, although they're not that miscellaneous. They're largely just the girlfriends. Um, the one-dimensional girlfriends? Yes. Let's start with the thieves. Okay. Because they're our favorite characters. Okay. Robert De Niro, a.k.a. Neil McCauley. <clears throat> going right to the heart of the matter. Yeah, we're starting. Right. We're going top down. I feel like that's the better way to go here. I only had two, and I'm not really in love with any of them, so I'm just going to say them. Uh, my backup, my understudy, is Ed Norton. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got him somewhere else. A Michael Mann yeah. favorite. Too slight. <laughs> yeah, too slight. Um, and my winner? Yeah. I think it's Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh Interesting. Oh my goodness. Different Interesting. vibe than De Niro, of course, but I don't know how to replace De Niro, so I'm not going to yeah. do that. DiCaprio, 
He's my uh, Macaulay. Interesting. Mm. Okay. Mm. Al. Um. So. Do you want to introduce your cast swap? I did not do a cast okay. swap for this one. Um. So I feel like. I, what I was trying to do is kind of think about the gravitas of different actors that wow. were in this to kind of think about who are kind of the big mm -hmm. actors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I still kind of, I still kind of struggled. Because you want the De Niro Pacino right. dynamic. Right. Okay. Um, I but I, didn't could, I, couldn't, I, didn't. I couldn't, I couldn't get, do it. I couldn't get there. Yeah. Um, I had a lot of different people for this. I'm trying to think of who my top ones are. I'm going to just say, um, I like Oscar Isaac. For this, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I also like uh, Killian Murphy mm -hmm. for this, mm -hmm. but I feel like to play off the dynamic I was just saying, it's George Clooney. Oh wait, Clooney's good. Clooney's good. I mean, I know he's done the well. That's uh, that's the my bank robbery <clears throat> thing. But well, that's my. That's my flip cast. You could take Ocean's Eleven oh, yeah. and okay. drop pretty much everyone there you in go. There you for go. all of them. Yeah. <coughs> I including Julia Roberts, you could so sure. she could fill oh, Edie's part or totally. whatever, or mm -hmm. one of the other ones. I didn't <coughs> consider uh, Clooney. Uh, that was my. I wasn't strict on age, but that was my age limit yeah. was sixty. Yeah. Um. But I, I thought of most a lot of the people I thought of that. I, but I didn't place were from Ocean's Eleven, too. Yeah. Mm. So I'm like, oh, but I'm not going to put Damon in there. I'm not going to put Brad right. Pitt in there. I'm like, right. Oh. Yeah, I have yeah. Pitt for one because I just because I think he could do it well, yeah. but it, it's not like a swap. So. Yeah. But that's a that's a good cast with swap, though. That yeah. works top to bottom. Right. Or Especially with the cops and the, yeah. Don Cheadle can fill in. You yeah. got tons of fill in. Yeah. Tons. Carl Reiner I, could be yeah. the Kelso. <laughs> Who's a. Uh, where do you put Andy Garcia in that cast swap? Oh, I think he, he mm. might be the cop. I think Vincent. he's Vincent Hanna. Of course he is. He could do crazy De, De Niro or uh, Pacino stuff. Yeah. I like that cast Yeah, there's swap. a ton. You got a lot of things. You got a lot of pieces to move around on the, on the board there. I like it. Uh, I want to know what uh, Frank. Frank. Oh. Bernie Mac. What would Bernie mm. Mac be? In the, in the Grill Man. Uh, oh, yeah. Fucking A. The yeah, Wheel yeah. Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got him down as uh, Donald Breeden is the uh, character's that's name. The character name. Yeah. Yeah. Even see, now I think it, Dennis even, it's even better yeah. now, though. That, yeah. uh, Bernie Mac. I, um, I had a couple that, and, and none of them I like, so I will not rank them as mm -hmm. starters or not. But. Uh, in a different way, I think Keanu Reeves could be Neil. I thought about oh, that, too. Yeah. And then, you know, Ben Affleck tried to be him in the town, so yeah. I think he could try and do it again. Yeah. Maybe, but I've got him somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I thought Paul Rudd could be Neil. Get Whoa. out of here! He had to be angrier, though. I don't know if he could amp it up. I don't know that up. he could be that angry. I'd like to see him try it. I, yeah. I want to see Paul Rudd in a non-comedic role. Yeah. I'm not sure he's the one he can pull off, but... <laughs> All right. Good. Great. Uh, he might make the motivation due to the relationship much more yeah. believable, though. I believe that. Yes. That's, 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 that's within his control. Uh, I'll start again. Fine. Uh, Chris, what are we going with his last name? Shirley he? Shirley his? Sh Shirless? I don't know if it really matters. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. Um... Val Kilmer. <laughs> Val Kilmer. Uh, my backup was Christian Bale. Oh, I got him somewhere else. I know. I think he, okay. he worked somewhere else well. Uh, my number one was Ryan Gosling. No. I want Ryan Gosling in a blonde ponytail. It's pretty much the answer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, see, so yeah, yeah. I, well, I don't want to jump. Go. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. We're, we're I only wrong. had one. Yeah. And just because I think he's a good actor so i would like to see what he did but uh ewan mcgregor oh that's good i almost put him in this movie <laughs> that's really good. i don't have him but that's i almost put him somewhere good. That's, that's really good 
Um, so I've got uh, Luke Evans. Yeah. Uh, this is where I put Ben Affleck. Yeah. In here. Okay. I have him somewhere else. And my top one, though, I think is Michael Fassbender. That's an intense Chris in this I movie. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. He seems, strikes me a little old now, but yeah. A little old, maybe, but fine. I don't think age really matters for this. These are like seasoned. Brendan is a stickler. He, oh. Yeah, I've, I've, I've softened in the last few months uh, with that. I think he's a, he's a little too European. That's why I don't cast him in American things. What? I haven't heard his, ac- his American accent. I don't think so. Recently. You watched the X-Men, right? He doesn't have a British accent in that? No. I think he does. I don't think so. I think he does. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you feel uncomfortable right I now? I do, actually. <laughs> Can we move on? Who, who's the old Magneto? What's, his, what's the character's name? The actor's name? Um, Gandalf? Yeah. Ian McKellen? Yes. He speaks with a British accent I'm in sure. movies, mm. and I believe Fast he does. does, too. He plays a German in the... Thank you. So I, I don't know British his American accent. accent. With the British accent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did you, you did... Yeah. Fast Bender. Yeah. Uh, Michael Chirito. Mm-hmm. This is where I put Ben Affleck. As my backup. I went all over the place Because that's it's Tom Sizemore. Yeah. I got Ben Affleck as my backup. The one I want to put in here instead is Bradley Cooper. Oh, that's good. I like a Bradley Cooper in the uh, yeah. Sizemore Yeah, role. that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I thought um, John David Washington, who's the mm-hmm. protagonist from yeah. Uh, yeah. Tenet. Yeah. yeah. For some reason, he scares me. I think Jake Gyllenhaal can always be crazy oh, like that. I had Jake Gyllenhaal in four different places. But here's the two that I cannot uh, come. I had the most from Michael. I cannot come down. Shia, Shia LaBeouf. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> or James McAvoy. Oh. He can play Psycho. I had him somewhere else. <laughs> Damn it. I like McAvoy. I'm a huge McAvoy fan. Yeah. Oh, that's good. I didn't put him in this movie, that, though, but I like McAvoy in general. Yeah. Good. I'm in for that. Shia LaBeouf, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. He's too crazy for me. He's nuts. Right. I know. That's kind of the character. Yeah. Yep. All right, so I've got Gerard Butler. Uh-huh. Mm. Fat or skinny? Uh, fit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next one. Oh, I'm so glad about this one. Uh, well, I'm gonna actually going to save him for number one. Mm. Number two, right. Tom Hardy. For, for Sizemore? Yeah. Okay, good. Isn't he but, Sizemore? I think but, he has Sizemore DNA. I think it is, but yeah. my top one that I love is Michael Shannon. Oh, oh damn it. I knew that was happening. <laughs> I have him somewhere else. Oh. I have him somewhere else. Okay. I thought this was the most obvious one. Okay. Wayne Grill. Okay. It's I, Jason Momoa. I think there's only <laughs> no. I think there's only one answer. <laughs> that is my only answer. <laughs> I think this is the Tom Hardy spot. Oh. I mean, Tom Hardy is Wayne Grow in real it's life. Jason Momoa. Mm. Yeah. He doesn't have to act. I guess <laughs> just look crazy. All right, we got Momoa. We got Hardy. All right, have... this I have um, Wes Bentley. I don't know who that is. He plays the kind of creepy neighbor in American Beauty. Oh. That guy? That guy, yeah. As Wayne Grow. Yeah. All right. That's too much. All right. But yeah. the one that I feel is much better, because he, he can play a different kind of crazy, hmm? but the one that I like is Corey Stoll. Hmm. Hmm. I like him. Is he bald or is he, yes. is he wearing a wig? I'm gonna go bald. I think he's better bald. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. I've got two optional ones. If you have them, great. If you don't, fine. Okay. Uh, Trail. Yep. I have Danny Trail. Just playing it. Again. 
I don't, I don't care how old he is. There's no other choice. If he's 85. 102, right. he's still fucking right. playing his part. Right. Yes. I don't okay. care. Yeah. yeah. Uh, All right. Did you... I did. I did not choose one. Yeah, I did. Just a, I've got... This character is, doesn't yeah. even matter. I've got John Barenthal. <laughs> sure. Sure. And Jeffrey and, Dean Morgan. And what the fuck, Trejo? You, you're all professionals, and you're the only one that can't shake your tail? Remember, he calls up, and he's like, I'm sorry, I can't uh, shake these guys. Well, let's talk about that. I feel like he was compromised in some way. Like, he was, like, that was a lie. He ends up getting killed over it, so I don't know, but. Well, that could make, I it mean. It felt Well, fake. Why, why else would he kill him? I don't know. Right. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I can't I, connect the dots and, and, and square that circle for you, but there's no way he had a tail that he couldn't lose. That's bullshit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just run it. Everyone knows. We drive by the airport, go through a parking garage, yeah. have another car. Right. That's they describe. That's exactly what fucking. Yeah, that's did. what he did. Um. Okay, trail. Uh. Donald Breeden, aka mm-hmm. Dennis Haysburg, right. uh, the Grill Man. <laughs> I, I didn't even do him. Either. I did. Yeah. I picked. Oh, I picked one strictly on racial lines. Mm-hmm. Uh, Daniel Kalia. Kaluuya. Mm-hmm. I don't like that one. No. The one I like is Adam Driver. Oh. <laughs> I want Adam fuck? Driver playing this role. <laughs> yeah. I had written down three names, but only one I'm going to say, and that is Common. Common? Oh. <laughs> Allison wins. That's, That's right. fine. Shut it down. <laughs> I have no problem with that. <laughs> that was one I felt really good about Common. going into this. <laughs> I mean, it's terrible, but you I win. But I you know. win. I know. I know I win. It's <clears throat> a good one. Does he rap at any point? <laughs> he doesn't have to. It's poetry when he moves. That's right. All right. right. The bad guys. They don't really have all the bad guys. There's Vincent Hanna. So he's, he's a bad guy? Oh. He's, he's, the he's the cop. He's the guy working against yeah, our Yeah, not the bad guys. Yeah. Got it. Um, I'll start, unless anybody wants to. I've got three for this one, and they've all been said so far. Oh, no. That's no good. My number three is a guy I put in four different places, but mm-hmm. I had him as my third backup, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Mm-hmm. I think he'd be awesome in this part. In this one, I want him to win this part, but he's not going to win it. I feel like he's a little young for he's it. Not, I don't think. I think he's not for the top. Well, he was a mm-hmm. little bit. Yeah, close. Uh, my second one is the guy I want to win, but this, my my number one trumps him. Oh. Oscar Isaac, I think, is the best for uh, Hannah. I think that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Except for this other guy that I found at the last second. Interesting. I want. Because he's crazy, because he's on cocaine, because he's manic and nuts. Right. I want manic nuts Robert Downey Jr. Oh. <laughs> he could that's be good, funny. actually. I yeah. think that would be good. Yeah, yeah he would be good. Yeah, that's actually that was a last-second addition. For uh, yeah. He would be good. Yeah. Like He'd have to be crazy. But uh, I thought that um, there's certain things he'd have to do uh, to like alter his physical presence maybe I don't know or stance or whatever mm-hmm. but I think he'd do it I think Jim Carrey could be a crazy oh. mm. Vincent Hanna oh like he would turn up the, the menacing and turn down the crazy I mean he would term. still have the crazy he would turn down the pet detective he would have the and pop would turn up but the, like yeah. yeah he would it would be Cable more guy well it would be more um not being gel- what was the 23 Truman like show like that kind of like <laughs> yeah I, I feel kind of true, Joe. Yeah, I think he could be yeah. menacing a little bit more. I like more. that. That's actually pretty good. I just want to see Jim Carrey doing more like legit acting. I'd like yeah. to see that. Yeah, I'm in. Al? So I'm not Vincent sh- Hanna. I'm, I'm not so. Give sh- me all you got. Give me all you got. Right. So be got, there. I've got two a.m. <laughs> be there. So I've got Joaquin Phoenix. Of course. I thought about that, too. This is where I have Christian Bale. Yeah. Yeah. I thought about that, It'd be a well. different, lower vibe, but still yeah. intense. No, but he can also play, like, a complete, He's a little, unhinged... A little internal. He, uh, it's uh, American Psycho. Right. Correct. Yeah. 
Um, and then I've got Russell Crowe. Yeah. He was floating around my so cast I was trying for a to lot. like again, kind of. I was trying to think of like over the like the big blockbuster like has done all of these big Oscar. A more intense American yeah. gangster for yeah. Russell Crowe. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's Go a ahead. good one. Okay. Ted Levine, don't call me Jamie Gum. Uh, Bosco is mm-hmm. his character's name. Mm-hmm. I've got two. Okay. One was said already, and it's a good fit. But he's my second character. He's my 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 understudy, Michael Shannon, uh. for Bosco. Uh. I want Michael Shannon in that mustache. Right. By the way, um, my number one is Sam Rockwell. Oh fucking hell! That's who I have. Out, get fucking out. hell! Damn it! Sam Rockwell. A nice Damn number it. two cop. I guy. went in yeah. a different direction. Unless you have another Al that you want to share. Well, <laughs> that was my big coup de gras. Yeah. Oh. Bon appetit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was shocking. That oh. was Declan's catchphrase <laughs> when he was six years old. When he was, it was, he was like excited or like. When he'd kill somebody in a video game, <laughs> bon appetit. <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's very psycho, but that was awesome. Uh, oh, that was so good. He said, oh, cooter your eye. Bon appetit, your ass. <laughs> bon appetit. Uh, I thought, in a weird way, TJ Simmons could be oh, this guy. That's good. TJ Simmons. Yes, he T- is, is it, you know... I don't think it's TJ. No, it's not. It's something... Isn't it? Uh, is J.K. It Simmons? Simmons? Oh, J.K. Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I was oh, my God. Simmons. Yeah, so, TJ's his brother. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I actually have... <laughs> TJ will make an appearance later. But, uh... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I thought he could be, like... Again, a, a menacing enough, but, like, he's just really kind of a yeah. deputy cop, right? Yeah. I Can he... It. I need it up tomorrow night. Can he be the Nazi from Oz in this character as well? Yeah. <laughs> that's what I want. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I love how that's how he's got so introduced funny. to the world. And he's done nothing but nice people since, basically. He's been awesome. Except asshole drum teacher. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who all. is the Nazi from Oz. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, Casals. I didn't do that. This is didn't even do it. The Native American yeah. cop buddy guy. Yeah. Uh, I had one name, and I throw down uh, Javier Bardem was oh. my uh, replacement for that. Really paint a lot for that side, that small part there. Yeah. Oh, well, I have but unlimited budget. This whole budget. movie is like just pick a bunch of famous people and put it in. I mean, a remake of Heat is going to get a big budget. So, well, it's one of the best movies of all time. Uh, the top five. <clears throat> so. Yeah, th- that character could be any person right. playing cop. Who cares? As well, this other character could too. Drucker, the other cop. Right. <laughs> cop one and I'm cop not even two. Doing this. This is where I, I just picked any other black guy to fill in because they're all the. I mean, every, both these cops are the same character. They should just be one character, to be honest. Okay. I do Donald Glover because I just like him. Right. At the end. Okay. Right. Miscellaneous. I've got three potentials. Fill them as you will, or we can talk about them as we want. Th- these characters really don't matter with who plays them. Okay. Justine, that is... Uh, the wife. Vincent. Pacino's Vincent's uh, girlfriend. They're not married, I don't believe. Really? I thought she was... No, they're wife. married. Are they he married? Says, he says he's you know, on the oh. back slope of my third marriage. There you go. Um, um, and then Edie, right. the uh, girlfriend, and then I put in Roger Van Zandt only because he kind of makes... No Charlene? His decision makes this movie kind of work. Yeah. No, because I thought she was so in- inconsequential, she could just be any female I, I have two people for that. Okay. Well, that, uh, that can be your miscellaneous. Uh, Justine, uh, I yeah. thought... Um, I originally thought Lady Gaga could do it, but then I, <laughs> then I wanted uh, Mila Kunis to do it. I oh, her. that's good. I consider her. That's I also good. put Anne Hathaway down, but I don't really mean it. Yeah. Um, I had uh, Laura 
prep on, pre on. <laughs> wow, where has she been? I don't know. Orange is the new know. black was the last thing, right? That yeah, we as know far of. as I know. I had two. Okay. I don't love the second one, because I don't think it's a good fit, but I'm okay. going to throw it out there anyway. I want... This Justine character is terrible. <laughs> She's... She fully ignores her daughter in every right. possible way. It's just like... It, Right. Not va- not present in anyone's life, right. or at least her daughter's life at all. Uh, I thought Jessica Chastain could play oh. that. Mm-hmm. That's overcasting. Uh, the one I kind of like better is, might be a little bit more, of, could play more of a mess, would be Blake Lively. Mm. I don't know if she works with any of these leads, but... because uh, you're thinking of her from The Town? The Town, yeah. yeah. That's kind of what I'm, I'm getting at a little bit. But that the Justine character is like the, in my opinion, the oh, least. Oh, is Blake Lively the crazy, crazy girlfriend in the yeah. town? Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. This character is is the least likable character in the movie, I think, despite all the the murder and the robbing right. and the killing and the yeah. bad stuff. Okay, uh, Edie, played by Amy Brenneman. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got two about. Okay. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give you two. I'm gonna give you one. Wow. Uh, I'm gonna do Amy Adams as my ED. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That's an intense ED. Different type. Yeah. But there you go. I went Scarlett Joe. I considered her definitely. She was on the short list. I thought she would be. Yeah. Good for that. Al? This is where I actually put Anne Hathaway in here for that one. I've also got a Rachel McAdams. I thought about both of those. Emily Blunt. I thought, it, well, all three were on my okay. short list, but I cut them out. Yeah. Um, I cast a Van Zant only too. just because. So I wanted like an 80s douchebag right. banker that's corrupt who would play that thing. I said Lee Pace. Oh. <laughs> so. That's actually pretty funny. Yeah. This is where I had either Edward Norton or James McAvoy as kind of my backups, but my number one for playing the douchebag Mm -hmm. uh, banker is Joel McHale. Joel McHale. Yeah. That's perfect. I like that. That is perfect. I did Nate. I wanted to do Nate. Yeah. Nate's a good one, too. So. Is it it not John Voight again? This is kind of back to the Ocean Ocean Eleven thing, but uh, I thought Pitt. Like could oh. be a freaked out Pit nasty, as a Nate, oh, as a sure. Nate. but I the the one that would be amping up to do it would be T J Miller. He's the bartender in Deadpool, oh, like, right, 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 like right, right, in right, Silicon right. Valley. Yes. I feel yes, like he could be good. like that's good, scrubby and yes. calm. Mm-hmm. Yes, I love Even that. Even though he's always so like talkative, mm-hmm. I thought he could do it. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's Nate. Good. Well, we gotta remember. And then Kelso. We have to all think about Kelso, too. Right? Kelso. I'm having that guy play it again, too. Yeah. He can play it again. It's just out there, man. It's in the air. You just <laughs> grab it. It's like... I'm disturbed by his beard in that that movie. It's not... It's kind of offensive. It's not really <laughs> well done. All right. Memorable scenes and quotes. Right. If there is one that isn't our... Everybody's first. Are you flipping it? Because she's got a great ass. <laughs> Why'd I get mixed up with that bitch? Because she got a great ass. And you got your head all the way up it. Great ass is right up there. Um, as well as uh, when he's talking to the snitch right before he meets him in the club. And Pacino freaks the fuck out. Yeah. Out of nowhere. Give me all you got! Give me all you got! <laughs> He's out of his mind. Vincent. Give me all you got! Vincent. Give me all you got! There's no way that was in the script. It's so... It, it catches everyone off guard. Right. Obviously, it's acting, but it's crazy town. It's crazy. That dude is out of his mind. Yes. Yeah. Uh, of course, I'm sick of I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. <laughs> but uh, and and then obviously, you know, Macaulay's like 
ethos yeah. statement. On 30, the, seconds. You know, 30 seconds. 30 yeah. seconds. Like, if you feel yeah. the heat around the corner. If you feel the heat around the corner. We always like when someone says the name of the movie yeah. in, in the movie. Yeah. Heat. Yes. So, yeah. That'd be heat. Yeah. Yes. We love it. Yeah. Great. Guy told me one time, don't let yourself get attached to anything you are not willing to walk out on in 30 seconds flat if you feel the heat around the corner. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking to an empty telephone. Yes. This is a dead man on the other line of this fucking line. What are you doing? What do you mean, forget the money? What am I doing? I'm talking to an empty telephone. I don't understand. Because there was a dead man on the other end of this fucking line. Uh, that's fine. What do you think? That was in the... That makes me think of Van Zandt, obviously. Uh, what do you think Henry Rollins' degree was in that got him that job in that bank or <laughs> hedge fund? What was he doing there? I don't know. I think he just gave advice. He wasn't even the muscle man. <laughs> Really? He didn't go to the drive-in. You would think if he's your best muscle man, you send him to the drive-in. You think he's not just a go-between, like a, a fixer no, of I some sort? No, I feel like MBA from uh, really? the uh, Booth School of Business. He was at Duke, but on the lacrosse team. <laughs> like he, he sort of, he's he had the degree and had the paper, but... Van Dan just needs a guy to bounce ideas off yeah, of, and yeah, yeah. they just mm-hmm. have a good repertoire. Mm-hmm. Repertoire, I'm sorry, repertoire. Bon appetit. <laughs> you know, so this is um, uh, so I don't so for me there weren't a ton of like quotable lines. It's only a handful, yeah. yeah. I'm um, sick of it. Other than well, so I'm sick of it. Um, great ass, yeah. the thirty seconds thing. Yeah. Then there was also you can ball my wife or oh, like that geez. whole thing yeah. that happens but you can't watch my tv my tv and he rips out that whole television and it, it, it a tv it's, it's, that in 1995 cost 37 dollars. right it there was nothing special about it <laughs> at all so i had more that more as it starts off sort of as a yeah. noteworthy quote but it's more about the scene you, you're missing your most hated quote which one who, who, oh, what are you, a fucking yeah, owl? I know, it's terrible. It's terrible. Um, of course, memorable scenes, the big shootout, big shootout. of course, of course. Um, and the coffee shop. Yeah. Um, I had an observations, and it made me chuckle a little mm-hmm. bit. So when Val Kilmer was in the dentist chair getting the bullet taken yeah. out oh, of him. By Jeremy, don't by, call me Henry Piven. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, um, he yes. looked like Doc Holloway, and I was just waiting for him, oh. um, Holiday, to be able to say, um, I'll be your Huckleberry. Oh I'm your Huckleberry. <laughs> like, <laughs> was as pale and sweaty yeah, yeah. in that yeah. scene as he yeah. was in Tombstone. He was going to flip his six-shooter right. <laughs> and then do a shot. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, well, and- Charlene... Giving him the signal, oh, like, yeah, yeah right, to, that right. they're there. I forgot how subtle the signal is. Like, her yeah. hands are on the railing, and she just goes, yep. it's one of those. Like, I don't know how you would see that 100 yards away. I couldn't right. at this point, but, you know. It's got an eagle eye. I you know. Uh, Michael Trudy, uh, Tom Sizemore, you know, for me, the action is the juice. <laughs> well, you know, for me... The action is the juice. <laughs> I both like and hate that line. Of course. It's, it's, it's really good and it's really bad. It is terrible. Uh, Macaulay, I do what I do best. I take scores. You do what you do best. Try to stop guys like me. Oh, my God. That's a good one. I do what I do best. I take scores. You do what you do best. Try to stop guys like me. There are some bad lines in this movie. That's what I'm... I, there's a handful of these ones where oh. you can see Michael Mann like folding his arms, oh, like man. he did it. Fucking got it, man. <laughs> did it. Give me the Oscar. Yep. Uh, any other ones? No. Here's the question that I wouldn't ask, except for we know what's happening at the moment. What would you want to see in a <laughs> sequel? Oh, yeah. I mean, the- not having read uh, anything. I mean, you're just wondering what's going to happen with Val Kilmer, the Val Kilmer character. 
and whether or not there's any sort of reconnection back with her. He's if, alive. Yeah. That's mostly it. Yeah, and she's out there. She's out there, right? right? Knowing kind of the whole. You're following the Kilmer character, right. that's or, or and her. Right. Didn't you see what Val Kilmer said as his idea? What? He he was he made a joke half serious comedy. He's like, I want to see the sequel where Chris finds his way back to Chicago because and yeah, uh, is dating Natalie Portman. Oh my god, <laughs> Portman's character. Right, right, yeah. right. Oh my god, <laughs> the daughter. Yes. Now the, the Heat Two book is out there. I read twenty five percent of it. It's at this point, it's largely a flashback to Chicago, and it's about the Chris character and the Hannah character and the Macaulay characters mm. um, before this movie. This that that book is both a s- sequel and a prequel. Oh, they do a flashback. Back, but... So it feels exhausting. who knows? I know. Uh, I, that's hilarious. It might be happening in this book. Oh though. my god. Ugh. I don't know. Yeah. But it, it's it's Chicago based. Okay. A lot of it. Okay. Let's get to it. Uh, the how much are they worth game? Yes. And now let's play the how much are they worth game. I can't believe I'm doing De Niro again. I know. And I've Me never too. remembered the number. None of us can remember. That's why I put him on here. I was. Going to replace him with Michael Mann, but I'm like, we don't remember De Niro. Who cares? We'll just okay, guess De Niro. again. Uh, top to bottom, well, f- front to back is Ted Levine. <laughs> wow. Okay. Tom Sizemore. Oh, my God. Val Kilmer, Al Pacino, Bobby De Niro. Yeah, I was going to put in... Uh, uh, man, but no. And I know Ty- Tom Sizemore is dead, so you gotta deal with that, but it's fine. Okay. We can handle it. Uh, we did... That would make it more interesting to do the Michael Mann. Well, we did Mark Wahlberg already, so no, <laughs> we can't put him in. Uh, Ted Jamie Gum Levine. I mean, he's managed to, like, make it, like, continue to work. You used to see him <clears throat> on a regular basis here and there. Lately, I don't know. Um, uh, $15 million. Ooh, what is this worth? Yeah, let's, 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 Sorry. let's talk through his bullshit. He's in Jurassic World. It's all in Kingdom. He's like a, he's like a uh, hunter. Hmm. He's a dinosaur. Literally. He's a dinosaur. Okay. Okay, so he has got how many title actor titles? Eighty seven? He's not pulling I think I still uh, a Mark he? Wahlberg salary down now. Right. He should be though. I mean mm-hmm. oing. Oing. He's a great big fat person. A man plagued. Hmm. He's in a short called F. Give him credit just for that. I know. <coughs> he tried to wash himself clean with that monk's run. Mm-hmm. Born American in 1957 Gosher. in Bel Air, Ohio. Memoirs of a Geisha Museum? No. Attended no. Marlboro College in Vermont. Summerstock, Vermont, Michigan. West Virginia. So West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Actually became Jamie Gunn, apparently, because he's in all the places he was. Okay. Uh, Ted Levine. Killed and skin. Eight victims. I've got a number. Al, you have a number? I do. Rob, you, you said 15. You sticking I, with that? I'm sticking with it. Right. Seems a little high now, actually. But I've got 11. I Al? 12. 12. Ooh. Right there. Oh, I still have a Mark Wahlberg on there. (laughs) The shocker of all shockers. Fine. Not to me. 
Rob is very up to speed on all of the uh, Mark Wahlberg uh, happening. Oh, Ted Levine is an American actor who has a net worth of six million. Ooh. I don't believe it. Now that Jamie got money, that means I win it. Okay, <clears throat> this will be the toughest one, I think. Tom Sizemore. He's well, I mean, I, I almost want to say nothing because he was like running out of craziness at the end. But I know that's the problem. Is, uh, is like what was the uh, the L.A. Madam <clears throat> Heidi uh, Fleiss? He was involved oh, yeah. with Heidi Fleiss. He was uh, that was his wife or it's, girlfriend. I forget. Yeah, two hundred and twenty five actor credits. I know that's what I'm saying. He's got that Saving Private Ryan money. <laughs> he is. How much did he extort? And gamble or whatever, and then the, the divorces. And he yeah. should have been like a huge actor. Well, he's got that striking distance money. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's even for Ryan, like, kind of turned him on to a second half. I mean, he's got to be worth more money than you think. He has so many parts. I'm ready to go here. I don't think he has. When did this he one. die? 